I want to ask you something, what do you live for? If a person loses all feelings, love, anger, and sadness, then breathing might only be like the ticking of a clock. There are some things you will never understand because you have never experienced them. After the outbreak of World War II, one quarter of the Earth's surviving population is ruled by a figure known as the Father. The Father believes that the root cause of war is the human heart, and that hatred is the disease. Therefore, he develops a neural drug that can suppress human emotions in the short term. Every citizen is forced to take the drug on time, and it is prohibited to stop taking it. If anyone is found to have stopped, they will be executed immediately. This is not enough. To completely prevent people from experiencing emotions, the father also legislates to strictly prohibit citizens from privately possessing music, books, and other things that can trigger emotions. Some people who do not want to give up their emotions form a resistance movement to fight against the government. In response, the new government trains a group of special agents whose mission is to maintain their rule. John is one of the most outstanding agents, with exceptional skills and ruthless demeanor. One day, John and his partner go to eliminate a group of rebels. John single-handedly breaks into the crowd and defeats the resistance. Afterward, he orders all the famous paintings to be burned. His superior summons him and asks what John felt when his wife was cremated for the crime of emotions four years ago. John replies that he felt nothing. Later, John discovers that his partner has been secretly hiding books and kills him without hesitation. After his partner's death, his superior assigns him a new partner, Tom, who claims to have the same ability as John to sense others' emotions in advance. John rolls his eyes in response. Back home, John has trouble sleeping, haunted by his partner's words. He dreams of the scene when his wife was taken away, and she only said one thing to John before leaving, remember me. Waking up from the dream, John hurriedly tries to inject himself with the drug, but accidentally breaks it. His son comes over with an extremely calm attitude, telling John to get another dose. As John is about to get a new dose, his partner takes him away for a mission. They capture an emotional criminal named Mary who has stopped taking the drug. During the interrogation of Mary, John is asked what he lives for. If existence is only for the sake of continuing existence, then existence has no meaning. John asks Mary the same question, and she answers that it's to feel. If you have never truly felt the world, you will never understand, it is as important as breathing. This conversation deeply shakes John's inner world. Returning home, John is awakened by a nightmare. He tears through the paper on his window to see the colorful world outside. The beauty of the moment is an epiphany for him, and from then on, he stops taking the drug. Each day, he either crushes the daily issued drugs or hides them away. After one mission, John sees blood and corpses everywhere, and his heart is touched. He secretly plays a phonograph hidden by the resistance, and as Beethoven's magnificent symphony plays, John's suppressed emotions finally erupt. The power of music has the ability to pierce through the faucets of the world. As the symphony echoes in John's mind, his partner begins to shoot the pet dogs owned by the rebels. Listening to the dogs' cries, John feels a sense of compassion for all living things. A dog runs to John's feet, and he slowly picks it up. The dog trembles and shows affection to John. Eventually, John saves the dog by using the excuse of researching whether it has a virus. That night, when John brings the pet dog home, he is discovered by the police. John kills all the policemen and begins using his position to rescue the resistance members. He also makes contact with the resistance leader. The leader hopes that John can assassinate the supreme ruler, the father in order to achieve true freedom. During the conversation, John learns that Mary is about to be burned at the stake. He runs desperately to save her, but he is too late. The deaths of his wife and Mary are too much for John to bear, and he breaks down completely. However, this scene is witnessed by his partner Tom. John is arrested for the crime of emotions. In front of his superior, John calmly frames Tom for the murder of the policeman. Then, the superior orders a search of John's residence. John remembers that there are unused drugs hidden behind a mirror at home. When he rushes back, he finds that the drugs are gone. It turns out his son took them. In fact, the boy had stopped taking the drug after his mother's death and had already sensed his father's emotional fluctuations. After escaping the ordeal, 
John tells the resistance leader that in order to assassinate the father, he must get close to him first. John captures all the higher-ranking members of the resistance, and through this opportunity, he is granted an audience with the father himself. However, when one is cunning, another is even more cunning. John finds himself outwitted, as the father he meets is just a projection. The father tells John that Tom has not been executed. Tom's capture was just a trap to make John lower his guard and infiltrate the resistance. Moreover, the so-called father has already died, and the current leader is the superior who is now the highest authority in the government. As it turns out, villains tend to be defeated by talking too much. John uses a concealed handgun to take out the guards and then proceeds to navigate through a hail of bullets using his unmatched gun fighting skills. Bullets seem to curve around him as he eliminates all the guards in minutes. He finally confronts the true boss and sees Tom's smirking face and the surrounding decorations. John realizes that the superior also possesses emotions, using something he himself doesn't believe in to make people believe and control the masses. The superior believes he has the upper hand, but in just a few moves, John eliminates his entire guard team. Tom brandishes his military sable like an acrobat. Just as the audience thinks there will be a fierce battle, John defeats him in a single move. Left with no other choice, the superior steps up to fight John himself. However, the superior is ultimately no match for John. The superior asks John, I have life and emotions. Can you bring yourself to kill me? John replies, I accept gladly. In the end, John destroys all of the father's speeches and videos. The people finally break free from the oppressive utopian regime that sought to control their thoughts. But is this really the end?